We are now going to look at using root loci for compensator design. So we've learned how to sketch root loci and we know, roughly speaking, how different compensators affect the root loci. And the questions we want to ask next are, what gains should I choose and what poles and zeros might I add in my compensator? Now, I would encourage you to explore a bit on Caesar tool, just play around, you know, change the gain, change the poles and zeros and see what happens. But in these videos, we're going to be a bit more systematic. We're going to focus first on simple gain design using root loci. Now, if we've got only one design parameter, the gain K, we can only easy meet, easily meet one criteria. So for this video, we're going to focus on a damping ratio criteria. What you need to be aware of, if you can only change one thing, then the closed loop bandwidth and speed of response and behavior that is achievable is limited only to those poles already on the root loci. So you can't change the root loci itself. Damping ratio as a performance criteria. So if you look at your notes on damping ratio, which will have been focused mainly on second order systems, the question is, what value of damping ratio is best? Now, what you will see is a choice of zeta of about 0.71 gives an expected overshoot of around 5% and is therefore a good compromise between speed of response and oscillation. Now, nobody is saying this is best what they're saying is this is often a good choice. Now, a value of z2 equals 0.71 is also really convenient because what it tells you is the real part and the imaginary part of the root have the same magnitude. So in other words, you can sketch these lines here of 45 degree angle, so it's very easy to identify that damping ratio. So a question then, for the following root loci, where would you put k and why? And obviously, we're going to use the assumption that a damping ratio of about 0.7 is a good one. So the first thing to do then is add the lines, the real part equals the imaginary part. And clearly, what you can see, therefore, is the part of the root loci which overlaps with those lines is here. And that gives you a pole. Now, it says equals, but really that should say approximately equals because I've just estimated it by looking at the picture. So you can see roughly what closed loop pole is feasible with the desired damping ratio. So in the next question, what value of K will put me here on the root loci? Now, all you need to do is solve this equation here. The root loci is given by, and I'll put it here, the modulus of GK equals one. Or if you want to be more precise, GK equals minus one. So we can solve for k by simply substituting in, and you'll see all I've done is I've substituted in the value of s from here. And k is the only free parameter, and it will tell you what value of k you need. Now, you'll see the other point here, it's not normally necessary to be pedantic about decimal places, because if you're slightly out, you can always change, but control is not usually that sensitive. Two significant figures is often enough. So a different example. For the following root loci, where would you put k? So we're going to do the same thing, but you'll notice here I've deliberately overlaid for you the lines which show you damping ratio. So if you want a damping ratio of 0.7, you can see it's going to lie on a line somewhere around here. So it's very easy to find. So I'm going to choose the closed loop pole to put me there on the root loci, and that gives you a pole of about minus 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7j. So again, I solve for k simply by solving this equation here, which is relatively straightforward. Another example here, just to show the same issue. And here, I've shown that you can, in some cases, give an explicit formula for K. So that's come from modulus of GK equals 1. And so basically what you've got here is, is I can solve for modulus of G. And what I'm going to do is take this value of S and simply plug it in here. So you can actually do that fairly efficiently. Now, 
People used to do this on pen and paper, but these days we've got computer tools. So what I'm going to do is illustrate how using computer tools, you can do this very efficiently indeed. So here's my CISO tool and you can see the root loci over here. You can see I've put the grid lines on. So I actually want to lie on a grid line of about damping ratio of about 0.7. So I can in theory pick up one of these pink dots and move it and try and get it to be about 0.7. But the trouble is you're looking at this and you're saying, oh, it's a bit zoomed in. I can't really see exactly where I'm at. I'm sort of roughly there, but I'm not sure. So what I've done is I've gone across to this other part of CISO tool and I've added an additional plot, which is the pole zero map. And now you'll see, I can see the closed loop poles. There's the closed loop pole there. All right. And you can see the current damping is 0.68. I can actually see that. So I've moved it over here with the hand to get it roughly right. If I want to see it blown up, I can look in this figure and I can see it a lot more precisely. Now, if I want to be really pedantic and say, actually, I want it to be exactly 0.7. So I'm going to go edit compensator, get my compensator window up. There it is. You can see the compensator at the moment is 3.67. OK, so currently the damping is a tiny bit too low. So what I'll do is I'll make the gain just a little bit smaller. Let's try 3.5. And you see I've got a slight movement. So now if I look at that, I can see the damping is now 0.708, which is pretty much bang on. I look at my closed loop step response and you say, are you happy with that overshoot, etc., etc. I can always tweak. And remember, if you want to go back to MATLAB itself, you can always check the exact closed loop poles with commands like this. Now, hand calculations. Historically, there were several shortcuts and tricks for estimating the value of K using one over the modulus of G of S efficiently from a graph for any given value of S, any target pole position. But I'm not going to do that here because it is still a little bit tedious perhaps slightly redundant given we now have modern computing but it is on the website if you want to go and look and see how to do it so some conclusions the achievable damping and overshoot and settling time is dictated by what can be achieved with the original root loci if you're just using a simple gain design there's no flexibility all you can do is pick a position on the root loci and say what value of, of k will put me in that position so what if the original root loci does not include the desired behavior we want? We're going to need to add compensator poles and zeros to change the shape. So in the following videos, we'll show how you can add a bit more flexibility to your design.